everyone this is Yumi I gaming logging in and the game is Eve Echoes. So Eve Echoes has been officially released worldwide and is available for everyone to download. So the first question everyone has when after logging into Eve is how to farm anomalies. Everyone got a sparkling brand new frigate and you want to test it out by going and farming down the pirates that roam around. Or you also might want to go and hunt out players just for fun. However, in this video, I'll be mainly discussing on how you can farm anomalies better and start off your life in New Eden in a spectacular way. So right now in front of me, I have an executioner. The le your starting level ship depends upon the faction you choose when entering the character. So if you got a Kaldari, you will be having a Condor with missiles equipped. If you got a Minmata, you will be having a Slasher with cannons equipped. If you got an Amar, you will have an Executioner with lasers equipped. And if you go Galente, you will be having a Tron with railguns equipped. So all these weapon systems have some really common characteristics, which I'll be going through in this particular video. So before going to live combat with any particular anomaly, you should be checking out your ship fittings on what you have on your ship currently and how you can improve with them. So let's head over to the fittings of my executioner. Now, as we go into the fittings, you will see that there are three slots in different directions on your ship. So the first is the high slots. These are the main weapon systems of your ship. The second is the mid slot. These are the sub weapons of your ship. And the third is the low slot. These are like the enhancements on your ship. In the low slot, you can equip a variety of weapons, a variety of enhancements. You can equip a speed booster called an afterburner, or you can equip a, say, a shield repairer or an armor repairer. Now, as soon as you get your starting ship, you will see that you have civilian small pulse laser equipped. And in on the screen right now, you can see that I also got an MK1 small beam laser and an MK1 small pulse laser. So the, there's a huge difference between a civilian small pulse laser and an MK1 small pulse laser. So if we long press on an MK1 small pulse laser, you will see that the DPS it offers is 11.27 and an activation cost is 3.3 joules and if we head over to the civilian small pulse stage you will see that there is a dps of 6.76 and an activation cost of 0.9 joules do not worry as the activation cost is not at all that high you will be you will be still able to attack pretty well if you equip a mk1 small pulse laser However, you will see that the optimal range on both of these are equal, but the DPS shoots up to a hundred percent more. So the one of the tips I would say that is to get an MK1 small pulse laser as soon as possible so that you can farm anomalies faster. If you go head over to the civilian small armor, you will see that the difference is there as well in, the, in a civilian small armor repairer you you can get an armor repair of 56 whereas in an mk1 small armor repairer you get an armor repair of 94 for the same activation cost so you are performing 100 percent better on the battlefield now how can you get the mk1 stuff i have been talking about i have a lot of mk1 stuff in my stories right now because i've been farming anomalies for quite some time so do not worry if you have a civilian one, you can just head over and start farming a level one or level two anomalies and you will get the MK1 pretty soon. However, as soon as you get an MK1, it is highly recommendable that you shift your weapon systems to an MK1 as soon as possible. Now, each weapon system has two different categories. So you must be seeing that I have got an MK1 small beam laser and an MK1 small pulse laser. So what is the difference between both of them? If we long press on the small pulse laser, you will see that it has got an optimal range of 5.25 and a DPS of 
and if we go over to a small beam laser it got an optimal range of 11 kilometers and a dps of 9.23 the main difference between them is of the optimal distance so but there of course you can also notice an activation cost difference and an activation time difference as well however those are not that significant when you are just starting off and all of these get balanced as well because if you are going for a small pulse laser you are in more close proximity to your enemy whereas if you go for a small beam laser you can fire at the enemy from a long distance and stay away from their lasers or any other weapon they might be using so there is a good trade-off and it is up to you to decide on what you want to take into battle however do keep in mind that you need to have the same weapon category equipped on your high slots so that you do not so that you can use both the high slot weapons effectively to their full potential each faction will be having their own set of weapons and they will again be having two different category types as i discussed i will be letting go of my civilian weapons and getting an mk1 system equipped so let us in this video i'll be going for an mk1 small pulse laser and i will be having both mk1 small pulse lasers so that i can utilize them to the maximum efficiency i will also change my armor repairer to an mk1 small armor repairer and a afterburner to a mk1 small afterburner you do not need to worry about the mid slot at this point of time because it is not that important right right now so you can see that my dps has just shot up hugely and it is now sitting at 31.35 if you want to increase your dps further you can go into the skills and go into weapon technology and choose which weapon you are using right now and improve those statistics you can go for small cannon damage say and you will see that it, you get an increase of 4% every level however there is a lot of things to consider when you are scaling for any particular weapon so you will see that there is a small laser as well as there is a medium laser so if you want to say go for frigates and destroyers you will go for small weapons if you want to you know fly cruisers and battle cruisers in the future you will go for medium weapons and if you want to say fly battleships you can go, you need to go for large weapons i will not be getting uh, much into uh, all the uh, technical stuff but those are just for just pointers for you to know about uh, also another thing is that if you go to fittings uh, you can also look at the recommended fittings which the game suggests you and it is uh, you can follow the recommended settings uh, set uh, fittings that the game has in, in store for you and those are not that bad i will say okay with uh, all that said and done go to the space and explore what new eden has got to offer us so before going into actual combat let us first understand what are you seeing on your screen right now so you can see that there is a small circle right on the bottom of the screen and that is the circle you need to look out for a lot so what does the circle indicate so the three bars you see on the left hand side are the shield then the armor and then the hull if uh, if you drop to even a 1% even a 99% of your hull that is if if the anomalies scratch to your hull you need to get out of there as asap you cannot wait uh, another second in there the on the circle on the right you see is the yellowish part is the capacitor so that is that shows how much juice your ship has right now so what is the juice the juice is the joules the gj we see on the weapons 
So if you go into a MK1 small pulse laser, you, you will see that the act activation cost is 2.31 GJ. And if you long press on the small circle, you will see the exact figures you have on your ship right now. So you got 207 shield points, 288 armor points and 225 structure or hull as we call it. The kappa in the capacitor, you have 456 joules. That is the GJ <laughs> and the rate is 450 meter per second. So the yellow thing right in the on the bottom of the circle shows the speed with which you are flying. We head over into the anomaly. If you like my content, please do hit the like button and do hit the subscribe button if you want to hear from me in for the future videos. Wherein I will be discuss discussing everything related to Eve Echoes and bringing to you all the tips, tricks and information you need to know about this vast universe. You will see that there is a subtext on the screen like there is a subtext one written right next to the small radar, blood radar small anomaly and in the others there are like level 10. So the, sub the subtext defines the level of the anomaly you would be approaching. Right now on day one, it is highly recommended that you stick to level one and level two anomalies. Going into high level anomalies will bring you high level ships and you will not be able to fight them at all. There are small, medium and large anomalies and those sh show the amount of ships you will find there. So a small anomaly has got small, uh, less number of ships and a large anomaly has got large number of ships. Another two points you need to keep in mind while attacking anomalies is that you do not fire at any base. Bases are the base level determines what level of anomaly spawns in that system. So you do not want your base level going down and and lowering the level of anomalies you get in that system. So please do keep that in mind. Another thing is that if, of course I mentioned before, if you have your hull scratch, just get away from there as quick as possible. Just go to the celestial body and select any of the planet and warp to it. Right now I am not doing it because I do not want to disclose my location as it is uh, important for you to not disclose your location in New Eden. Well. So now let us go into actual combat and warp to an anomaly to see how anomalies work and how you can farm them effectively. So right now we will be warping to a blood raider large anomaly. Now when we long press warp you will see that we can set the distance at which we want to warp. Now what will affect the distance you want to warp at is the weapons. So you must be remembering that I have got small pulse lasers equipped and those have an optimal range of 5.25 kilometers whereas the small beam lasers had an optimal range of 11 kilometers. So if you have uh, the beams installed and then you should be warping at say 10 to 11 kilometers from the center of the anomalies. And if you have say a uh, really close weapon range systems installed you would be preferring to warp at say 3 to 4 kilometers. So I got the short range weapon so I will be going at say 3 to 4 kilometers to the blood raid radar large anomaly. And there we go. I really uh, like the graphics uh, they have put into while we warp. If you get damaged, I'll walk to a station for repairs. If you do not have any stations nearby, first walk to a celestial body, then find a nearby station. If you get low on capacitor, walk to a station for filling it up automatically. So now we are warping to one of the juiciest part of the video. And we'll be doing live combat right now. So we have arrived at the large anomaly right now and let's lock on to the targets and set the orbiting at 5 kilometers. 
now you can see that we have a long our targets are like really far away so we will switch off the lasers and start approaching them first because if you just for example fire at the target from uh, such a large distance your weapons are not at 100% efficiency and there we go one target down it is uh, I always prefer to say I always prefer to focus fire on my targets because it helps take down the target quicker and an extra ship not firing at you. Always uh, keep, always have your optimal distance in mind when you're orbiting and do not say orbit closer or orbit farther away from them. My optimal range is 4.25 so I'm kind of sticking to that and there we go I'm orbiting at 4 kilometers so all, you always get the option right uh, like in right up to the circle right like near the circle and I'm gonna switch off my lasers and I'm uh, having my afterburner on so that I can approach the target quickly I see a target in action right near me so I'll just focus my fire on them and it is just going further away okay and I'm not hitting that so I'll switch my weapon systems to another one and an orbit at 5 kilometers if you just click on orbit you will start orbiting them at uh, 0 kilometers which is not preferable for any weapon you have even if you have the close one you would not want to do it I'll just switch off my weapon systems right now so that I save on jewels as I'm down to around 78% that is not that bad but still it's always preferable to save your capacitor in case you enter PvP or just in case the pirates just wear you out and my frigate is making short work of them it, it doesn't even feel like they are anything right now and I got a huge wave coming at me and I'll again orbit at 5 kilometers I'll switch off my lasers I'll have my afterburner on I can uh, manually unlock the, this target and focus on this because this is getting really near and it's better to pick this off first and I'll just start focusing fire you can even switch off the afterburner to save on jewels if you want it's like completely up to you having a speed makes uh, them their weapon systems a bit difficult to fire at and sometimes the afterburner can uh, in some situations be a huge advantage to you you need to click on the circle icon of uh, like the targeting one every time so that you lock on to the targets back wait a minute I need to adjust which target I'm hitting right now and I'll focus fire on this as you can see I'm also losing my armor so I'll switch on my armor repairer and I do not have a shield repairer so I'm not I cannot repair my shield with any modules my shield will regenerate really uh, slowly time to time and if you are a shield tanker of course you need to switch on the shield repair as soon as the shield goes down and manage your energy efficiency so that you do not have like a zero capacitor sitting at you and uh, you just can't attack anyone I'll uh, gather all the good stuff now let's see my I'm approaching so you need to be in, within 10 kilometers of any of the wrecks in order to gather them let's see what this has it all again got small pulse lasers so you see getting pulse lasers or you know the small pulse laser or so, small pulse beam is not that uh, difficult a small beam laser I mean 
and it's not that difficult and just farming one to two anomalies will get you that really quick and i got a reactive armor which is a pretty good one i th this is the first time i'm seeing this in the game so thank you so much for watching and if you like the content please do hit the like button and if you want to hear about future updates from me regarding evacuos content do hit the subscribe button and turn the notifications on thank you so much ever for watching and see you soon